I always find the discussion on disaster recovery very important. Having worked in mainframe environments and in a number of server rooms, I've seen a lot of disasters occur, such as fire sprinkler discharges or floods or leaks. I can't express enough how important computer network users and individuals should always have a plan to recover their data. I know it doesn't always occur in the day-to-day world for individual computer users, but it's commonplace in most networking environments to have a backup plan and data recovery. I've spent a number of years working as a continuity practitioner, and I help companies build plans for their disaster recovery. When data is lost, especially in a large workplace environment, significant downtime can occur, and depending on what they do, significant money can be lost. Imagine if you had, like, let's say a server room that was impacted for a customer call center. Imagine how many calls would be lost per day and what type of impact that would have on their customers. It's a little bit different for the day-to-day computer user. If they lose their data, only one computer has a loss. But to that individual, that loss could be significant. For example, imagine if they were a researcher and all the research they had were stored on that computer with no backup. Or maybe they were an author who kept entire books on their hard drive. A significant amount of their work can be lost. Usually people put no thought into this until something has occurred. I think you could agree things can and do go wrong, especially with technology. One thing I like to do in advance is to enable the boot logging option in Windows. You can do this by pressing the F8 menu. What this does is it creates a log file, and it's really called ntbtlog.txt. So it's a text file, and this is actually saved in the Windows registry. When boot logs are performed, this file is appended, so it's very useful to troubleshoot common problems because it logs all of the drivers and services and resources as they're loading. This file serves as your reference to locate problems within the boot. It'll basically describe what the drivers loaded and what they did not load. So it maintains a list of devices in chronological order as they're loaded. And then you'll be able to identify which files loaded, and you can look for the keywords of load failed or did not load driver, and that can point you in the right direction to cover any issues. On this slide, you see common disaster recovery screens from Microsoft Windows that allow you to completely reset a PC or to begin disaster recovery from a device such as a USB drive or a compact disk. And you can see the Restart Now button for that option. So you click right there in the gray area and that gets it going. So you do have some options, but not all of them retain the data that you had. One option that you have when experiencing a disaster or recovering a system is to access the boot menu by pressing F8 immediately after the post process. You can then choose to operate in safe mode as a command shell application. Safe mode will give you several options to choose from and define your restoration point. For example, you might click safe mode, safe safe mode with a command prompt, enable logging, enable low resolution video, or to go to the last known good configuration. You can also use debugging mode or disable automatic restart on the system failure. All of these are different options you'll have on the safe boot up menu. So all of these will allow you to boot up into different special modes that can lead you further in the right direction of any of the causes on why you're having a boot failure. For example, if your computer hangs or crashes during the boot process, you might have a device that's actually related to that error. You might also have an issue with a driver. One of the options I mentioned just a minute ago tells you about disabling low resolution video. And this option, for example, allows a computer to boot without any exceptions related to incorrect video settings. So it'll just keep going and boot up and let you find out the other issues in the system. That way the computer will boot and identify any drivers that failed to load, but overlook the video issues. You have another option for booting as well, and this is using the last known good configuration. When you use this method, it allows you to restore the computer to the last working configuration you had. And this is especially handy for an example. When you have issues with your driver updates, you can select last configuration that was known through the F8 menu, and this will automatically restore the section of the registry with a copy that was available with your last successful boot. The downside of this is any data that was developed between the last successful boot, which could have been 10, 15 days if you if you haven't reboot the computer in a long time, this will be lost. So you have to determine if this restoration point is going to work for you and be worth the data loss. Most of our more recent versions of Windows, depending on which one you're operating, I use Windows 10, have a recovery environment. This is basically a shell where you can access the mouse, the network, and local drives from the RAM disk environment. And this is accessed through the power menu by selecting restart. You're offered menus here to continue to normal boot. 
either enter a recovery environment or turn off your PC. So you want to select the troubleshooting environment and that gives you some advanced options to restore the system, perform a system image recovery, start repair, or go to command prompt. One of the common causes you'll see for window errors you might see is related to improper shutdown. And I've been guilty of doing this myself when either the power cord came unplugged and the battery died or things like that. Um, but you'll see a message on the top of the screen that says Windows did not shut down successfully. And this might be due to the system not responding, but it gives you opportunities to recover your data using the safe mode configurations. On this slide, you can see the Windows option for recovery under the control panel under System Security, and then under Security System and Maintenance. You can see the small recovery link at the bottom. It gives you the option to refresh your PC without affecting your files and to reset it completely or to start over. So you've got a couple of options you can click through. Basically got a hyperlink there where you see Security, Maintenance, and Recovery. So I'm talking about the small word recovery there, and that'll allow you to refresh your PC a lot of these repair fixes are relatively easy per to perform if you simply know where to look and where to click with the right button. Many of your customers will not be familiar with these menus or be able to perform these emergency repairs on their own. So let's talk about factory repair partitions, startup repair, and system image recoveries. Factory repair partitions are actually hidden partitions on the system drive that contain an operating system image and all the drivers or hardware that were shipped with the system. To access the factory repair partition, you start the computer and press F12. A list of the bootable media will show on that screen and things that are detected by the BIOS. If a factory recovery partition exists, you can select it and choose to boot from it. Then you will be prompted to reload your system. An important thing to be aware of is when restoring your system by way of the factory recovery partition, it reformats your system drive, which means you lose all the data if you haven't already backed it up. Another option you have to perform an emergency repair is through the Windows menus. This is especially useful when you feel that the operating system files may be corrupt or you have an incompatible version. On occasion, some of these files are inadvertently deleted. So you've got some options there where things might have been inadvertently deleted or become corrupt. So in order to get to these files, you go to the restart menu and select startup repair. And the computer will automatically restart and then perform these repairs. This may require you to have a Windows installation disk on a USB drive or some kind of thumb drive or zip drive though. Your next option for emergency repair is using the system image recovery. This image recovery takes a picture of your entire system drive and forms a backup which clones your current operating environment. That way, if you need to restore to a previously created system's image, you can do so. When restoring a system recovery image, it replaces every bit of the content on the computer's drive with the contents of the system image, so you want to make sure you're backing things up regularly. So there you go, you have three pretty good options to choose from for emergency repairs. It's hard to stress to computer users to make frequent backups. Quite often they don't know how, or it only becomes an issue when something bad like a computer crash has occurred. The important thing is that they make a backup to another medium such as a drive or a, an external USB disk. And then the file history becomes very important because you can always open the file history and go back and create original files to the control panel. To set this service up, you want to open the file history control panel and click begin this service. You have to have a drive that has enough space to work from, and then you point the computer in the direction of the disk you want to use. You can choose a system server disk, or put it on a server, or put it in any kind of system disk, or a non-system disk, such as a USB or a thumb drive. But the main thing is you're going to set up the scheduled times for this to occur. So you've got two options you can use here. You can use the PC Refresh and PC Reset when you want to work on backup and restoring your computer. So, Refresh installs Windows and the data remains while the reset completely cleans the drive. So you have to make sure you know which option you want to use. So once again, PC Refresh is exactly like reinstalling Windows and all of your data remains intact. PC Reset is truly resetting your PC and wipes the local system drive completely clean. When you restore your system, you can choose the restoration point and take the computer back to that specific time. On this screen, I show a number of the recovery tools available under the control panel, including creating a recovery drive, opening a system restore, and configuring your system restore. Most of what we have discussed so far is how to repair your computer when it's in a non-booting state. You might also have other kinds of recovery CDs or USBs or drives available from vendors you can use to restore 
your computer to its default factory installation settings. Quite often these require a significant amount of space, so a lot of times what you'll find on a drive is a hidden partition that contains all the tools you need to restore the image for your hard drive. In addition to the factory images, some hardware vendors give you the option of making a recovery image using special imaging software. So you might do that as a CompTIA a certified professional. You might have some imaging software that you keep handy uh, in case you want to do this for, for clients or customers to make sure they've got a backup at later points in time. So it's just part of continuity and recovery. In chapter 14, we discuss preventive maintenance for your computers. There are additional things you can do in your scheduled maintenance to make sure your disks are backed up and to keep them running safely and smoothly. You want to make sure that you schedule your disk defragmentation. And in order to do this, you want to access your accessories and then go to System Tools and then go to the Task Scheduler. You can adjust the disk defragmentation from the default settings to any kind of settings that you want. You want to also make sure that your Windows updates occur and you accomplish any kind of security fixes or performance improvements that they send out to you. Then you want to make sure at last that you've got all of your anti-malware definitions and you perform any kind of driver and firmware updates. So I click on where we have got the red circle on the computer here and you can go down and maintenance and go and set any of the appropriate times that you want. You can see the specific time where my last uh, update ran on this computer. 